chocolate hazelnut and orange tart. This recipe is packed full of tricks and tips to improve your pastry skills. So let's get started. Start by preheating your oven to 180C, 350F, then get 65 grams of hazelnuts on a baking sheet and place them into your oven once it's up to temperature. 10 minutes later, or once the skins of the hazelnuts have started to darken and blister, remove them from the oven and get a clean cloth. Place the hazelnuts into the cloth, fold it up, and begin to rub and roll them around. This is the best way to remove skins from hazelnuts and after one minute of rubbing and rolling, 80% of your skins will be removed and that's perfect for this recipe. Then place them to one side to cool off for five minutes. Five minutes later and the hazelnuts have cooled off enough to handle them, we just need to break them down a bit. I'm doing this with my knife by cutting them all in half. This stops them rolling around on the chopping board too much. Then running my knife through them. We want pieces of hazelnuts not crushed into a powder. Next, get a mixing bowl and add 140 grams of softened unsalted butter and 90 grams of icing or powdered sugar. Then cream them together with a spatula, spoon, whisk, whatever you're comfortable using until everything is incorporated and looks like this. Now add one third of the zest of one orange, just the orange part, no white pith as this is bitter. Next add a pinch of salt, roughly one fifth of a teaspoon, all of your beautifully chopped hazelnuts. And finally 180 grams of plain or all purpose flour. Now this part gets a bit messy but I feel it's important to mix this together with your hands. If you use a machine, then you tend to overwork the gluten and your pastry shrinks a lot more whilst cooking. Just bring it together into a shaggy dough, collect any bits that have fallen out and chuck them back in. If you don't already have one of these dough cards, then I highly recommend them. They are so handy for so many things. Here I have half a beaten egg. For this recipe, we want anywhere from a minimum of 15 grams to a maximum of 25 grams going into this dough. Most eggs weigh around 50 grams, so I separated by eye and kept the other half for later. I'm pouring the minimum of 15 grams into the dough to see if that gets me to the consistency I want, which is a slightly tacky or sticky dough. You can always add, but you can't take away. Remember that. Now we need to rest this dough to relax the gluten. So here I have the baking sheet that I plan to cook my pastry on with two sheets of baking or parchment paper. Check that your pastry ring or pastry case fits the baking sheet. I'm using a 25 centimeter, 10 inch pastry ring. Now place your dough on the first sheet of paper and place the other piece on top and press down into an even circle around the thickness of your little finger. Most recipes tell you to wrap the dough as a ball in cling film or plastic wrap to rest it. This is a bad method because after resting you have to roll the dough a lot which means working the gluten more and that increases the risk of major shrinking whilst cooking and you use plastic unnecessarily. This is a lose-lose, my method is a win-win. We've already done most of the rolling before resting and not used any single-use plastic. Now place into your fridge for a minimum of one hour to rest and relax the gluten. After one full hour of resting, the dough is ready to be rolled. Preheat your oven to 160C, 320F. Today for me is warm, 25C, 77F, so I can start rolling the dough straight away. If it's cooler for you, then you may need to wait a few minutes for the dough to soften slightly. When rolling pastry, at first, don't roll all the way to the edges, stay in the middle three quarters of the dough. And to keep the shape as a circle, rotate it one sixth at a time. If you rotate it a quarter at a time, you'll end up with a square. Once you're getting close to the size you need, you can start rolling the edges to the same thickness as the middle. The overall thickness we want is around five millimeters or one fifth of an inch. At this point, check to see if you're at the right size for your ring or case. I need to do a little more rolling, then just make sure there are no lumps and bumps anywhere. Double check the size and slide the pastry back onto your baking sheet. Now peel off the top layer of paper and line up your ring or case. If you're using a case at this point, you'll have to cut around the pastry with a knife and pick it up and place it in the case. With a ring, you can just press with your hands and you have the perfect cut without even having to handle the pastry. This is why I prefer pastry rings to pastry cases for a lot of my baking. Now take away the excess pastry and save it just in case you need to plug any holes later and it also makes great cookies. Using the other half of the egg from earlier with a splash of milk or water to loosen it, Brush all over the surface of the pastry. This is going to be like a varnish and is going to stop the pastry from going soggy when we pour in the filling later. An important step, don't skip it. Now into a preheated oven at 160C, 320F for 10 to 15 minutes or until golden brown. Exactly 12 minutes later, my pastry is ready and has got a nice golden color. It's firm to touch, but with a little give. Leave this to cool whilst we prepare the filling. Into a small saucepan goes 400 milliliters of whipping cream. This has 30% fat content, avoid using double cream or heavy cream with 40% fat content 
as this makes the tart too rich. Put that on a low heat and stir occasionally so that it doesn't catch on the bottom of the saucepan. We don't want this to boil, just to get hot, so keep your eye on it. Whilst that is heating up, we are going to prepare the 370 grams of dark chocolate. I'm using a 48% chocolate. This could also be anywhere up to a 70% with these measurements in this recipe. Don't use milk or white chocolate as a substitute. The tart will be too sweet and it won't set properly. I'm breaking it into smaller pieces so that it melts easier. You could also pulse this in a food processor or use chocolate pistols and skip this step completely. Okay, back to the cream and it's up to temperature with some wisps of steam coming off the surface and no sign of boiling. I took this to 65C, 150F. Off the heat and over to the chocolate pieces that I have in a large heat proof mixing bowl. Steadily and carefully pour the hot cream over the chocolate and begin to gently stir to get the chocolate to melt into the cream. Don't stir this too fast as you could cool it down too much. After a little mixing, it should look like this. At this stage, add 85 grams of fridge cold butter in small cubes. It is important that this butter is super cold. Stir that in as well, being a little more vigorous this time and keep stirring until you can't see any more little lumps of butter. This can take a few minutes and if it doesn't get mixed in properly, then you'll end up with a greasy shine on top of your tart or little pockets of unmelted butter. In the end, it should look like this, beautifully glossy and smooth. Now get your cooled pastry and carefully spoon a little of the mixture around the edges where the pastry may have shrunken a little. This is going to seal any gaps we have. If we poured the mixture straight in, there's a chance it could all pour out of the little gaps. Think of it like an insurance policy for your tart. Give it a few gentle taps to get all the chocolate mixture into the gaps and place it in your fridge for 10 minutes or your freezer for five minutes. After five minutes in my freezer, the chocolate mix has set enough to not leave any chocolate on my finger when I give it a prod. Give your chocolate filling one more stir to check everything is well incorporated. Take a deep breath and pour the filling into your tart case. Using a silicon spatula, scrape every last bit that you can out of the bowl. Place in your fridge for a minimum of four hours, ideally overnight. The very next day and my chocolate tart has set and it's time to add the finishing touches. I'm grating some more dark chocolate over the top with my microplane. Alternatively, you could also dust with a little cocoa powder, sprinkle with finely chopped hazelnuts, zest a little orange. All of these would be great options for adding finishing touches to this beautiful tart. Now carefully slide the tart off the baking tray onto whatever surface you want to serve this tart on. For me, it's my chopping board. For you, this could be a serving plate or a cake stand also. Using a palette knife or a thin bladed spatula, whatever you have, slide it in under the base to free it from the paper and gently pull the paper out holding the tart in place. Now get a blowtorch and gently and carefully heat the outside of the ring just a little so that the chocolate melts enough so we can remove this ring and have a nice clean edge. If you don't have a blowtorch, then use the smallest knife you have, dip it in very hot water and run it around the edge of the tart to free it from the ring or case. Now for the time we've all been waiting for. Let's see what this tart has come out like. Look at that. Amazing straight edge from using the tart ring and a nice balance between filling and base. Now you've taken all this time to prepare this luxurious tart, I need to show you how to slice it like a professional. Using a toothpick, find your center point. Now get a long bladed knife hot in some very hot water, dry it off on some paper towel, line it up to the toothpick, Apply additional pressure to the blade with your free hand and slice. Be sure to get all the way through the base. Pull the knife through the tart like this rather than coming back out the top. This would ruin your presentation. Clean and dry the knife again and repeat the same process for the next slice, always being 100% sure that you're all the way through the base. Clean your knife once again and there you have your picture perfect, Instagrammable slice of dark chocolate, orange and hazelnut tart. A lot of the steps in this entire recipe may seem a little over the top, but these are all the little details, all of the 1% that add up to make 100%. This is what gets us as close to perfect as we can get. Alright guys, and that's that. This tart goes great with strawberries and raspberries. I really hope you go try it soon. Go check out one of my other videos, and I'll see you in the next lesson.